You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. Yes, and my name is Rob, and we do welcome you, and we are grateful that you have chosen to spend a few minutes of your day with us. We never take that for granted, not for one second. This is episode 971, and uh, we're glad to be with you. We are glad to be with you, and today's show should be quite interesting. Um, Regarding drone selections, um, in a day and age when DJI is continuously moving in other directions other than beefing up their Phantom line, which was the flagship of DJI. And yet we hear rumors of new action cameras and little Osmos and this, that, and the other. And a lot of people are wondering, I've gotten a lot of questions. It's like, why is DJI focusing on anything but reviving their main line of drones? So it's funny because, I mean, you know, a lot of people were asking, what's going to kick DJI off of the pedestal for owning the market? And the answer is, it looks like themselves. Yeah, potentially a misstep in uh, strategy, but we don't know. We don't. We don't know what's coming out. We are not DJI. That's true. (laughs) We are not DJI fanboys. Uh, And and we don't know um, what they're coming out with next, but I would think they're going to have something soon. Or do we? Just kidding. We don't. (laughs) Maybe we do. Anyway, (laughs) we don't know what they're doing, but um, this question is just a great, great, great timing. Um, It's it's an amazing question. And you know what? With Parrot's new release yesterday, it makes me question how I would answer this particular question if I had experience on that new Anolfi thermal drone. Yeah, you'll have to talk about what excites you about that. Just so much. Really? So you have the same 20 megapixel sensor that's in a Phantom 4, but it's in the Analfi. It's got a global shutter, and it's got a thermal camera, and it's got both cameras together, and unlike the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, which uses a 12 megapixel camera, same sensor that was on the Inspire 1, um, the Analfi uses the same sensor that's on a Phantom, but it's essentially, it's combining the larger sensor instead of a smaller sensor. So there's just so much more you can do with it. So yeah, it is really exciting. But caveat, haven't flown it, really want to. Um, so I can't talk it up too much, obviously, without having experience on it. I don't want to be like one of those other guys. So Indeed. Are we ready for a question? I think we are. Today's question is brought to you by... Our friends in the Drone You community, thank you for all the support. Um, I really, I, I cannot say thank you enough for all the reviews on the comprehensive mapping class. It really makes me happy because my entire vision last year was to go super, super deep and technical. And we've done that. And now we're just expanding on it um, as we are about to launch a whole new part of Drone You, which I'm really excited about. And we've got all these classes that are already, you know, in, in the hopper. So thank you for your continued support. And I think a lot of drone pilots are also realizing the value that you do have to be constantly learning and on your toes in this industry. Otherwise, you can get knocked off your horse really fast. So in fact, what we're seeing is a pattern of people going to multiple mapping classes. Because they want to keep going deeper and deeper mm-hmm. and deeper. Well, they realize how complex it is. They do. And they also realize that in three days to try to learn all that is really hard. And they're willing to invest in their education and in their future. True. Absolutely. True. All right, cool. Hi, guys. My name is Chris. I live in California. I've got my Part 107 as well as Part 61. I fly full-scale fixed-wing and gyrocopters. I've also got 30 years of flying RC planes and helicopters. I've got my LLC set up and I work full time 40 hours a week in the corporate world at my other job. My plan is to run a drone company as a single operator. I'd like to focus on real estate, both residential and commercial, doing mapping, modeling, roof inspections, construction progress reports, maybe some youth sports. I had two questions for you. With the Phantom 4 out of stock, um, that seems to be the drone for me because it allows you to do mapping plus everything else. The Mavic Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom don't do mapping well from what I understand. Should I wait for the new Phantom 5 or whatever's coming next in the Phantom series? Or is there a drone I, I could use for all those purposes? And bonus question, um, 
what would you recommend as a good web hosting provider for a small drone operator? Thank you very much. I enjoy your show, guys. Thanks, Chris. Uh, boy, you are a busy guy. Got a lot going on, 40 hour uh, a week job, plus doing everything else that you're trying to do, which we love. We love that kind of ambition and love being a part of folks like you trying to make that happen. So with what's going on with Phantoms, what does a guy like him do? Number one, there's probably not a perfect drone that's going to be able to do everything that he's wanting a drone to do, except maybe the Phantom. I think this is a good opportunity to talk about when you are getting into a drone business and you don't already have an existing business that you're augmenting, you, I, I just want to lay the cuss words out here, but you really need to figure out what you want to do with a drone. If you go out and you promise to be all of these services to all of these different people, they're going to look at you and they are not going to take you seriously. You need to focus on whatever you want to do. We talk about this in the business course. We talk about who the audience should be for your particular clients. If obviously, in the timeline of building your business, you know, maybe you start off with real estate, but you only stick with it for three to six months just because you're using it as paid practice, right? And then you go into maybe mapping construction sites because you understand that mapping in general can service a need for many different businesses, but you don't need to advertise it that way. It's just aerial photography, videography, photogrammetry. That's what you do. In fact, I still have this business card. I love this business. Well, and everything that you're saying is especially true for someone who's trying to get started the way that uh, Chris is trying to get started, right? Which is to keep his existing job yeah. and kind of ease into this. Exactly. That, that makes this point even that much more important. So um, Danny, who came to our mapping class, uh, Danny Lambert, um, he, he has a company called Aerial 51, which is actually really cool. That's clever. A51media.com. And he has this business card. And he was actually saying, you know, the only thing I want to change about this business card is just saying that, like, I do a couple things. That's it. Because you really don't want to give the impression that you've got all this stuff going on and you're scatterbrained. Like, like a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Exactly. Right. Yes, exactly. So I'm just going to say this. I'm going to get off the high horse. You have got to figure out your timeline of clients that you want to serve. You need to focus on how is this going to build you as a pilot? Is it going to force you to become a good pilot to fly in areas with um, dense trees that you need to be spatially aware? Are you constantly challenging yourself to become a better and better pilot based off of the missions that you're taking on? Um, I just, gosh, I just... This just, it kills me, Rob, because so many people just get so excited and they love the fantasy of like, oh, I'm going to be, a, Rob, I'm going to be a drone pilot. I'm going to go outside all the time and be in well, nature. And it's like, you have to have a plan. You have to think about this systematically because if you don't, this is not going to be a long-term viable business. Well, and I think what a lot of folks do, and it's understandable to a certain extent, at least why they do it, but that is they are going to throw everything against the wall and see what sticks, <sighs> right? Because, and it's natural, um, but going about it the way Paul's talking about in the end is going to serve you better. And that does not mean that you can't venture into other aspects later but focusing on getting really good at one or two or three or however many, I don't know what you would recommend as far as that's concerned, I suppose one or two, you're probably going to find yourself seeing other opportunities that are going to lead you down other paths at some point as well. It's going to happen organically. In my opinion, if you do subject tracking and construction mapping, but you're not using like um, drone deploy or some, um, I should stop really saying drone deploy. I should say something else, but uh, like Maps Made Easy, if you're using any of these apps to do mapping and then autonomously send that footage to the cloud and then you just creates a map, that's not going to grow you as a pilot. It's not going to grow your mental capacity for understanding how photogrammetry works. You're going to be like all these other guys in the world that are like, oh yes, I know drone mapping. Look, here's my drone deploy map. It's awesome. Look, check it out. Check it out. Uh, and then 
when you're asked to map something complex that takes multiple flight paths and you have to merge maps together, you're going to have no idea how to do it and you're going to sit there with your tail between your legs. So I would say if you want to become a really good pilot, focus on subject tracking and focus on mapping with desktop applications so that you really understand what you're doing. Very cool. So what drone are you going to do with that? Or is that the point? You got to figure that out first. And again, so for this gentleman, for Mr. Chris in California, at this point, what direction does he go as far as the drone's concerned? Oh, man. Um, so a big shout out to our sponsor, uh, DJI New York City, um, which uh, Peter, our good friend, uh, is the manager of that store. They just got the very last shipment of Phantoms and refurbished Phantoms um, to the store. So if you are looking for a new Phantom, just email drone you at camrise.com. So it's just drone you at camrise.com. It'll send you into the funnel um, and you can get a great um, a great phantom. Um, everyone knows if you're a drone you member, you get also a small discount um, if you go through Peter to get those phantoms. He does have phantoms left. He actually call, he called me yesterday. He's like, do you want one more? Really? And I was like, yeah, I kind of do <laughs> because we're doing so many trainings now. It's just like it would be silly for us to not pick up a, a refurb Phantom. I mean, we just bought a brand new Phantom Advanced. Advanced. Are these advanced that they have? I, th I think they're pros. Really? Yeah, but they're only they're cheaper because some of them are refurb. And I'll take a refurb because it's a training drone. Well, but especially one that Peter's checked out. Exactly. Yeah, I trust them. So, yeah, we probably should do that. Um, if you want a Phantom, go to DJINYC.com. Check it out. Uh, they're one of the last people that has them. Um, so... Other than that, uh, to answer that question, you know, what's a drone that he can do mapping with and that he can do all these other things with? See, for me, I don't take anyone seriously who flies Mavic only because that means they don't know how to fly attitude mode, which means they're not a real pilot. So, I guess I'm um, not a real pilot. Excuse me? I guess I'm not a real pilot. <laughs> yes, you are. You okay. phone attitude mode. That's true. I've forced you to do it. It's fun, too. It's like one of those mental things where people are like, <gasps> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then you like do it and you're like, okay, step one, we're going to learn wind bias. And that's why we use the hover drill, which is like our you know, patented drill. Anyway, long story short, uh, once you learn wind bias, you're going to find that attitude mode just feels so much more natural. It's also, you're in ultimate control. You can't have a flyaway in attitude mode. Right. So, um, you know, it's, it, I don't consider people pilots unless they fly in attitude mode. I think Peter would say the same thing. So I, I, for me, I want a drone that can fly in attitude mode. I know he's like, well, we can't get a Phantom. What would you get? You can get a Mavic 2 Pro and hack it as long as you have the old assistant software. So this is also another reason I'm really glad I have not upgraded this computer, Rob. Um, I can't stand the new MacBook Pros anyway because all those stupid dongles. I still have my micro SD port on this uh, 2015 MacBook Pro. I actually bought it in 16, but it's the 15 model. And frankly, I still got the old version of assistance so I can hack the uh, Mavic 2 Pro to have attitude mode, um, GPS mode, and sport mode, which is really nice. So if you're going to hack a Mavic 2 Pro, great, use it. Not going to be really good for mapping. Um, they're still having issues with GPS data being written in the EXIF part of the file and the XMP part of the file. The new uh, PIX4D 4.4, uh, I believe, handles that. Um, I don't know about other services as of right now. That being said, if he can't get uh, Phantom 4 Pro, maybe he should buy an Inspire 2 with X4S. I know that there's an X4S shortage. I've heard about it. There are X4S cameras available online. In fact, there are two for sale in the Drone U trading post. If you're a Drone U member, you have access to that. You know, Rob, I really don't know the answer to this question because my go-to is a Phantom. You can do, I built a business on a Phantom. I continue to do most of my drone jobs with a Phantom. Right. I, we were just filming um, the new practical exercises piece of the Don't Crash course out in Florida. And I just had issue after issue after issue with the Inspire 2. And the Inspire 2 has had way more problems than the Inspire 1 ever had. I know people are now again buying the Inspire 1s, which I, f I find funny. Um, but understandable. 100% understandable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people are going to buy at the end of the day. Once they realize what they need, they're going to buy the cheapest thing that solves the problem regularly, repeatedly, and consistently. And that's a Phantom 4 Pro or an Inspire 1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Inspire 2 X4S, obviously you can do mapping, you can do subject tracking really, really, really well with it. But again, you know, you're putting up a very expensive bird that's going to be harder to replace. That's why I always go back to a Phantom. 
So if he can only get in a Phantom Advanced, Phantom Pro, or great, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So I mean, we just bought one. There's, I just saw some on Amazon, so I know that they're out there. Right. Um, the difference between Advanced and a Pro is just that you don't have side facing obstacle avoidance, which if you're a pilot, you don't need it. So. That's the only difference. It's a little aggressive. It's a no-brainer. It's a little aggressive for me to say that, but I say it with confidence. Meaning it's a little aggressive, uh, the whole you're not a pilot, mm -hmm. the pilot doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, I don't, I, for a while I felt bad about saying that, but I don't feel bad about saying that because if you're out there and you want to be a drone pilot and you don't constantly push yourself, um, what is it? Kay Anders Erickson, perfect practice model about how you're constantly challenging yourself in different ways to create practice essentially to fly. I mean, we have drone you members who literally built up a business just doing drone based missions and it was essentially their paid practice, but they became so good at it and drone base was like, Hey, we want to use you. So yeah. they're making 50, 60 grand a year, which 50, my first year of drone piloting, I only made 46 and that was what I brought in. That doesn't count expenses and all that. So I barely made the cut. Uh, that was a long, long, long time ago. But if you're making 50, 60 grand as a part 107 pilot on your first year, in my opinion, you're doing great. Absolutely. No, that's a great kickstart. So I sure. tell most people they shouldn't expect to make money in any business for the first 18 months, but you can actually like, ah, uh, if you buy an, uh, a Ronin S and a, and a small camera and a Phantom, you can pretty much do any video production ever. As long as you focus on how to slowly move cameras, how to work on showcasing tone and white balance and like understanding really how it works. I mean, one of these girls that I follow on Instagram, she's an amazing, I know you have to go. She's an amazing photographer and she just went on yesterday and said, I still shoot in auto. Yeah. And it was like, wow. Like oh. I was shocked by that. And it goes to show, <laughs> I can appreciate that. it goes to show that as long as you know your client, you know what they're looking for and you can deliver that. It doesn't matter how you get it. Yeah. And in fact, if you can go deeper and help them understand how to tell the story they're trying to tell, mm -hmm. then it really matters less. Yeah. So I would say if he cannot get a Phantom to go back, to just recap, to quickly answer his question, if you can't get a Phantom, I guess the next best thing is an Inspire 2. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, get a Mavic 2 Pro. Hopefully in time, uh, mapping will get better with it. But again, it's a linear rolling shutter. It's not going to be you know, the end all be all solution for mapping. It's, it's just not. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just uh, flabbergasted. What kind of shutter does the Amalfi have? Global. So? Yeah, the Parrot yeah. Amalfi that has a 21 megapixel sensor, same sensor as the Phantom. It does have a global shutter. And guess what? It can also do thermal. So you can also do a whole lot more than what you could just do with a Phantom. I just so. don't know how it flies. So I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, go buy one. Because I don't know how it flies. Right. And I'm such, I'm such a stickler for how drones fly. Of course. Yeah. So, anyway. so anyways, but that might be an option depending on how it flies, how it, how it tests out. Right. Cool. Thank you for the question, Chris. Do appreciate it. Go to askdroneu.com if you have a question and please subscribe or share this episode and any others that you found valuable. We would appreciate it very, very much. That helps us tremendously. And uh, we appreciate every single share, subscription, review. Yes. Thank you again for listening. That's going to do for us on that crazy bombshell with Rob, who already said goodbye. I'm Paul. And I'm Rob. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>